talking about curved mirrors, we've been talking about them qualitatively up until this point, which means we've been talking about them without putting any numbers in. Well, you know me. I'm not going to be happy for long if I can't put some numbers in with my equations. Hang on, I think this light is too close. Let's try that instead. The ray diagram that we drew in the previous video, I measured some numbers, but we didn't actually do any calculations with them. So if you have those notes and you want to compare those to what we're going to have here, we had an image height of 13 centimeters. We had an image distance of 68 centimeters. And we had a focal length of 26 centimeters. You know, just for the sake of review, let's draw our three rays one more time and find our object. You've seen me do this and you've done it as well in the optics bench, but let's just try it one more time. The first ray I'll draw will be the principal ray. The principal ray comes in parallel to the principal axis. Every time a ray comes in, it has to go through the top of the object. That's what we're creating the image of. So I line my ruler up as parallel as possible to the principal axis, and I draw a light ray that starts at the top of the object and goes until it hits the mirror. When a light ray hits a mirror, it bounces. The light ray reflects, and it reflects based on the law of reflection so that its reflected angle is equal to its incident angle. But because this was a principal ray, we know where it's going to reflect. If this is a spherical mirror, then every ray that comes in parallel to the principal axis reflects to go through the focal point. So we don't have to worry about a protractor or any of that mess. We just draw our line. All right, principal ray drawn. The second ray I like to draw is the focal ray. The focal ray is in some ways the reverse of the principal ray. It starts at the top of the object, just like every ray does, only this line goes through the focal point instead of going parallel to the principal axis. From the top of the object through the focal point, and keeps on going until it hits the mirror. When a light ray hits a mirror, it's going to bounce, it's going to reflect. It's going to reflect so that its reflected angle is equal to its incident angle, but this is a spherical mirror. So we know that any light ray that goes in through the focal point will be reflected out parallel to the principal axis. So I'm going to draw a line here that is parallel to the principal axis. And the point where those two light rays intersect is where the top of my object is going to be. The third ray that I can draw, I can draw just to check. So the central ray starts at the top of the object and goes to the center point. It goes to the point where the principal axis meets the mirror. And rather than trying to make that angle the same, we're just going to draw the reflected light ray that visually those angles appear to be pretty much congruent, pretty much the same, and they do. So we have our three light rays coming together to tell us where the top of our arrow is. The top of our arrow is below the principal axis. So to draw in the whole object, we'll draw a line that goes from here up to the principal axis. We hopefully have gotten pretty good at the lost art of image description. L was the location. We would describe this location as being between the, or beyond the focal point. We would describe the orientation of this object as being inverted. We would describe the size of this object as being smaller. And we would describe the type of this object as being real. The way you can tell that it's a real image is that actual light rays created this image. This is the image that you saw of my front door on the piece of paper in the front yard at the end of yesterday's videos. All right, but I'd like to, to know what the distance to this image is.
define what the height of this image is. I told you last time that we would end up having numerical answers for the location and the size of the images, um, and that's what we're going to do now. The equation that's going to give us those is called the lens mirror equation. And as the name suggests, we can use it this week for mirrors, and we can also use it next week for lenses, which is pretty convenient. There are two different convenient ways to draw the lens, to write the lens mirror equation. The first is the simplest, and I think of as kind of the definition. One over the focal length of a mirror or a thin lens is equal to one over the object distance plus one over the image distance. If you know any two of the three, you can find the third one. Here's a nice thing about the lens mirror equation. As long as all three units for focal length, object distance, and image distance are the same, we can put any units into this uh, equation. So we can leave everything in centimeters. We do not have to change things into meters for this equation. Most of the time when we use this equation, we're looking for the image distance. So I'm going to go ahead and just tell you, you can do the algebra, you can figure out what it was required to solve for this equation, but when we do the algebra, the image distance will equal the object distance times the focal length divided by the object distance minus the focal length. DOF over DO minus F. And sometimes it's handy just to have that written down as opposed to recalculating it. Um, you can solve it with the equation with all the inverses, um, but I'm just going to do the algebra for you there. Okay, so it's a pretty simple matter then to plug this object distance and this focal length into that equation and calculate what our image distance should be. So, hang on, I left my calculator behind. times 26 divided by 68 minus 26. And I get an image distance of 42 centimeters. So let's measure. Let's measure and see how close the image we drew here is to 42 centimeters. And I have a little less. I have about 40 centimeters up here. And that's always going to be the case, especially if you're trying to draw ray diagrams on something as big as a whiteboard. Drawing a perfectly parallel line is pretty near impossible. So getting an image that, 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 that is that close makes me perfectly happy. Now, what about the height of the image? The height of the image isn't in our lens mirror equation. So we need another equation. And that equation is going to relate the image height and the object height, but it's also going to re relate the image distance and the object distance. And they're both related by the magnification. The magnification of an image is equal to the image height divided by the object height. How tall is your image divided by how tall was your object? Um, and this is a pretty intuitive equation. If your image was twice as high as your object, then your magnification would be 2. If your image was half the height of your object, your magnification would be 1 half. And the magnification is also equal to minus di over do. Minus sign's a little weird. What this tells us is that we're going to end up, when we plug these numbers in here, with a negative image height. Our image distance and object distance are both positive numbers, and so is our object height. So our image height is going to have to be negative. What about the image that we have up here? is consistent with something being negative. Yeah, it's the fact that it's inverted. The fact that this image is upside down is what I think of as why the image height is negative. So the magnification for this lens, or this, this object, is minus di over do. This magnification is going to be a negative number. And I'm using the calculated image height here. I only measure the image height just to, to confirm that my, my picture is about right. I'm always going to use my calculated numbers. The magnification that I get is negative 0.62. And that seems reasonable. Does that seem like it's about
about two thirds or so, a little less than two thirds of the height of the original one. And this negative magnification indicates that my image is inverted, that it's upside down. And now we can find the height of the image. It's going to be the magnification times the object height. My object height was 13. 13 times negative 0.62 is negative 8.0 centimeters. And if I measure the height of this image, I get about 7.5 centimeters. 7.5 centimeters seems about right to me. Okay, so these are the equations that we're going to use, but we've also sort of seen a little bit that signs are going to matter. Let me erase this ray diagram and let's talk briefly about these signs. And then let's calculate one more, we'll do one more practice problem. DO, the object distance, is always positive. The image distance, the image distance is positive for a real image and negative for a virtual image. If we had created a virtual image on this for this um, for this mirror, the image would have been behind the mirror on the other side of what is kind of the zero point where the mirror crosses the principal axis. So it makes sense that, that image, when that image position is negative, what we have is a virtual image. The height of the object is always positive. Let me make these a little, let me make it easier to see them. The height of the image is positive when it's upright and negative when it's inverted. And there's one more thing we have to get a sign convention for. If I switched the curvature of that mirror, but left the focal length the same, let me say that again. If I flipped the curvature of the mirror, if instead of having it be a concave or converging mirror, I made it a convex or diverging mirror, then I would not get the same image properties for an object at the same position, which means there has to be something that changes in this equation. And the thing that changes in the equation is the sign for the focal length. The focal length is positive for a converging mirror and negative for a diverging mirror. This makes lots of sense with mirrors. If we think about this almost like a number line where the mirror itself is zero, everything on this side is positive, everything on that side is negative, and there's a sense in which the focal point for a diverging mirror is actually on the left-hand side. It's actually behind the mirror. Um, so I think those side conditions make a fair amount of sense. So, you know what, actually? Here's the problem I want you to solve. I want you to solve this problem, and this question will be the last question on your viewing quiz. This is a little bit tougher than what I've had you do for the viewing quizzes before, but I believe in you. I think you can do it. An object sits <laughs> Sorry, the dogs just remembered I don't know. They remembered about how squirrels existed earlier. An object sits 40 centimeters in front of a mirror. and produces a virtual image point 13.3 centimeters behind the mirror. I want you to find two things for me. I want you to find the magnification of that image and I want you to find the focal length of that mirror. Find the magnification of the image and find the focal length of the mirror. Um, those are your two questions for the quiz. 
Um, and for your secret question, what else do you think the dogs could have been barking at if it wasn't an imaginary squirrel? You can use your imagination on this one. All right, um, this should be enough to get you going with some more questions on the UT Quest, um, and I will see you tomorrow to talk about refraction.